everybody. Let's continue on with some behavior assessment. This is actually more about measurement and assessment and agreement and interval of occurrence and functional assessment and procedure. Blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this one. Oh my gosh. Here we go. All right. You ready to roll, folks? Here we go. Behavioral assessment. Let's keep moving. What are we going to remember what behavioral assessment is? It's when we assess behavior. <laughs> I know that was stupid. Anyway, um, so what are we going to record about behavior? What is it that we want to record? Do we want to record the topography? How does the behavior look? What does that mean? How does the behavior look? I'm good. Looks pretty. No, that's not topography. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Anyway, gosh darn. All right. So think about the behavior of coloring. Okay, so we look at the behavior of coloring and go, look, can the kid color? And they color all over the place, right? They color all over the show. They just, there's no lines. They don't care. They just color. Well, that counts. Are we recording the topography of the response? Well, we might have to define what that behavior looks like, right? So for me, coloring with my kid, I was like, well, can you color inside the lines, please? All right. So not just the behavior of coloring, but how it looks specifically. Is it inside the lines? Swimming. It's all about topography. Um, are you swimming in a way that's effective? In fact, if you're in a competition in swimming and you swim incorrectly, you'll get disqualified from that stroke. Why? Uh, well, it's really simple because, hmm, you didn't do the right stroke. So if you're doing the butterfly, if you're in a butterfly event, and you go out there and you start swimming with the crawl stroke or the freestyle, whatever you want to call it, then guess what? <laughs> Disqualified. Why? They're focused on the topography. Are you providing the, is the response the way it's supposed to look? What does that behavior look like? Right? So you could also think of uh, the behavior that I'm engaging in now, lecturing. I could lecture very monotonically, and which is very difficult for me to do. And I could just kind of keep a flat voice and start to tell you all sorts of things about topography. Or I could be like, hey, yo, boop, ha, ha, guess what? Topography. Look at this. It's how the behavior looks. It's it's the surface of it, right? It's kind of this, think about a topographical map. It's kind of the, the, that, that, that superficial sort of level of behavior. Sure, you're engaging it, but how are you doing it, right? Anyway, let's move on. Um, we can develop checklists um, on how the behavior should look, right? So what to do? What is it? Did you do this? Yes. Did you color inside the lines? Yes. All right, excellent. Um, we could measure the frequency. How many words am I going to speak per minute? All right, notice what I did there? I added a rate. Oopsie. Why? Because I put it over time. Frequency is just how many times did a behavior happen? It's kind of weird without a, with, without a time, right? <laughs> so then you make it a rate. So he did 47 words in a second. Yes. So um, I'm not as fast as Eminem, but uh, I can lecture really, really, really quickly. In fact, these are slowed way down for you. Um, I've recorded them at one speed and I've backed that speed off like 50%. And if you don't believe me, listen to this. So I'm just going to jack up the speed of the lecture and it's going to be like this. So actually that wasn't quite true, but I lost my words. But anyway, you get the point. So we can measure the frequency, the rate. So the clear definition of key uh, is the key here. We need to use this for discrete behaviors. So if you're going to count the number of words that I'm going to do in a one minute period, that seems pretty clear, right? How many words is Ryan going to say in the one minute period? Right? So that's a really clear definition. Or if you just say, how many words? Like, well, what do you mean, how many words? How many words do you say? How many words do you read? What is it that you mean? Be clear, all right? We're going to use for discrete. Wow, oh, what's this discrete behavior thing, man? Discrete is something that has a clear beginning and an end. That was discrete. Now let me do it again so you can hear. <laughs> um, a laugh is discrete, kind of. It's a clear beginning and end. There's a word. It's discrete. It has a clear beginning and end. Crying. <laughs> You don't know when it begins and ends. I mean, you kind of do, but there's no, like one behavior lasts for hours. Oh my gosh, does that count? That's weird. But that leads us to something else. Here we go. Um, oops. <laughs> That's what you get for not studying your slides ahead of time, folks. I thought that was going to go into um, duration. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to record the time and the instances of the behavior. How much time were you measuring for and how many instances of the response? We're going to plot this on a graph. Now, trust me, folks, this is something you're going to get very used to doing because your entire career will be spent making graphs and interpreting them and helping show other people. Why? Because little graphs are the language of psychology of behavior analysis we only know what we see and we see is what we plot and what we when we plot it and it becomes a graph and then it becomes interpretable and all these wonderful numbers and all these behaviors start to make sense because we can see patterns so you're going to plot the behavior you can use a frequency graph which is what most of you think about when you think about a graph like a line chart something like that or you could use a cumulative graph or a cumulative record <coughs> go look at the other videos on cumulative record anyway um so cumulative graph is just where um you're going to say the behavior happened once and then the next time the behavior happens even if it just happens once you go up to level two on the on the y-axis and then the next time it happens you go up to three and the next time and four this allows you to actually get a rate on a piece of paper it's really kind of cool um, anyway, so go look at the uh, cumulative record for that one. So frequency of the graph is at this measurement, how many times do the behaviors happen? It's not cumulative. It doesn't add to the previous one like a cumulative graph does. It just shows you each instance what they have. A line graph, pretty easy. So 
duration. This is what I was hinting at earlier when I got ahead of myself. But I'm always ahead of myself, which makes it hard to lecture. All right, so anyway, duration, relative duration, amount of time in a, uh, per, per a given period, right? So how long is the behavior engaged in, being engaged in? If I go back to crying, ah, and I engage in that behavior for seven minutes, well, that's great. But uh, out of a 10-minute period, um, how much time did I engage in that behavior for? So uh, seven minutes, right? So 70% so of that time, I engaged in the behavior. So there's a relative duration versus duration, but they're basically the same thing. On the clock, how long did the behavior happen for? This is really good for continuous behaviors. Oh, did you see that? I like I actually planned ahead. It worked. Anyway, um, so it's really good for continuous behaviors, behaviors that are not discrete, don't have this clear beginning and end. Lecturing is an example of a continuous behavior. I could just do this all day long, like, and would love to just sit here and talk at you, but I think you'd get rather bored and the video would get really, really, really long. And eventually YouTube is like, we're done, man. Just stop. Right. Anyway, so um, used for continuous behaviors. Right? So intensity. How intense is the response? I'm backing away from the microphone right now so I can get more intense without damaging my equipment. There we go. Right. So intensity is the strength. Boom, boom. How strong is it? Right. Um, sports. How much intensity? <laughs> Sorry, I get a little intense when I lecture on this stuff because I love it. All right, all right, so sports. Are you giving 110%? No, coach, that's impossible, but I give you 100. All right, so are you running as hard as you can or are you just kind of lollygagging, right? Um, are you, I was trying to make a joke about Colin Kaepernick, but that's just like going to die. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll let you think about that for a minute. Anyway, so sports is a good thing to measure intensity. Lifting, right? So um, how much intensity are you putting into lifting if you're at the gym or whatever? All sorts of things. Um, we could measure this in all sorts of ways. How hard can you pull something? That's intensity, I guess. So um, how loud are you um, versus how soft? Versus if you're at a football game and it's like this. Woohoo! Yeah! Sorry, folks. I just, I love doing that. Anyway, here we go. More on behavioral assessment. Stimulus control. Do they perform the behavior when they're supposed to? All right. So, um, do you go into the library and be like, Go Cougs! Or do you go into the library and be like, May I check out the following book, please? So hopefully you do the latter, not the former, <laughs> but Hey, I was, I'm a cougar, man. You never know. Sometimes you're sitting there in the library and you overlook that football field and you can just start, start cheering and it gets kind of loud. I'm joking, but you could have anyway. Um, so do they perform the behavior when they're supposed to is the behavior under stimulus control? This is a great tool to teach somebody if, if, if they're engaging in a behavior, but they're not doing it when they're supposed to, my gosh, why don't you just teach them when to do it? Ah, well, sorry, getting way ahead of myself. Anyway, <sighs> does it happen when it's supposed to happen? All right. Is it happening under the right condition? Again, that's the library example or whatever, right? So latency. How long did the period of pass? How long of a period happened from the stimulus, from the time the behavior was prompted, if you will, until the time that it happened, right? So if I'm trying to speak in Spanish, my fluency is going to be rather, rather slow because I can't speak in Spanish. I might be able to come up with a couple of words once in a while in Spanish, but like the point being that I'm going to long latency be like, say clock and i'll look at you be like hmm you have a really long latency on that one because i can't remember i tried to come up with one um say fast and be like okay uh something about rapid rapido i don't know anyway so um the point is did you see that gap in time right um how about uh oh let's see if something i do know in spanish <laughs> It's all gone. My Spanish has left me. Why? Because there's no stimulus control right now. In other words, the latency is getting big. If you ask me to speak about Spanish right now, it's huge latencies. I'm not going to respond well. I'm just like, it's gone. It's out of context. It's not there, right? Um, so we worry about latency, especially when we're talking about efficiency and fluency, right? I am definitely have like zero latency with talking about these topics. Why? Because I know I'm inside and out. I've talked about them a million times and I'm really efficient. I'm really fluent on the topic. So my latency is really low, okay? Um, so another way to think of latency, if somebody hits me, and then the time it takes for me to hit them back. Or, ouch, you hit me. Ouch, I got you back, right? So, I, you know, no, I don't know why I used it hitting as an example, but um, it was salient. That's why, and it can make noise, and I have a microphone, and not a video. Anyway, so, whew, sorry. Quality. How well is the behavior done? In other words, that's related to the previous categories, all of them right? So quality is this ephemeral thing. Well, how do you know that's a quality behavior? Well, because you got a, the, the appropriate, the appropriate latency, you had the appropriate topography, you performed it at the particular rate and under the certain conditions. Wow. Holy cow. Look at all that. It all goes together, folks. Quality is this really arbitrary thing that you use all these other features of behavior in order to, um, to create, if you will. Right? So anyway, there you go.